what is the proper time distribution that you would recommend? So whenever it comes to, uh, let's say, time distribution when it comes to writing, of course, there would always be recommendations of, you know, uh, let's say, 20 minutes, especially if you're writing task one, and then 40 minutes for writing task two. But within those 20 and 40 minutes, then you need to further divide them into just understanding, again, going back to understanding the question. Uh, so you have to do that, understand the question first, maybe give yourself two, three minutes, really make sure you know what you're going to be writing about. And especially if it's task one, maybe you can start listing down uh, particular things that you want to compare if you have a table or a chart. Um, but then, make sure that you leave editing time at the end because people are always trying to finish you know like they're trying to add more words at the end of it and then what happens is they end up with uh, let's say an essay or a report that is maybe in the right in the middle of a sentence <laughs> you just can't blame them because sometimes we are faced with a very tricky task and and, and I just can't think of any ideas until the very last minute. Yes, I suppose so. And of course, we never really know uh, what kind of question you're going to end up with, right? Because uh, there are a range of topics that are available. But the thing is, what you need to do, that's why you always need to practice a lot. You need to manage your time. And you also need to start thinking of like what works best for you. Is it really brainstorming that works best for you? Or is it just writing an outline? Is it writing right away, but then at the end, leaving time to make sure that the structure makes sense? So all of this, even though there are recommendations and what you should do, at the end of it, if you have practiced enough, if you've given yourself enough time to really kind of go over your strengths and your weaknesses, then you will know what works for you. And there's really no way around it. There's no shortcut to it. And this is one thing that I've been hearing a lot on the grapevines, <laughs> that uh, even if you, you leave the task when unfinished, but you manage to deliver an outstanding task to you will still have a high score. Now, that's difficult to say. When you do say outstanding, does that mean it's a bad nine? <laughs> or do you just mean that it's maybe your best writing? Because how it's actually done is your task one is worth less than your task two. But for it to get still maybe a bad five, it needs to be Again, it still needs to be like around 100 words. <laughs> maybe give it, uh, maybe give it, uh, let's say, an introduction and part of the body. And if you really don't have anything more to say, then maybe, yes, you can focus your efforts on task two because that is worth double <laughs> of task one. But if you leave it unfinished or if you leave it, uh, let's say, with only 50 words, that might get a bad three. <laughs> so the final score is the average between the two tasks? The average between the two tasks, but with task two multiplied by two. Mm. So yeah, so that's basically going to be divided by three in the end. So if you, let's say you get a task one uh, band six, and you get task two, which is a band seven, then you get an overall of 6.5. I think we've had quite a talk, and is there anything that you want to share on well, this part? I just think that, again, <laughs> I know my students hate me whenever I say this. For you to improve your writing, you have to write. You have to write, sure. You have to write, and it's not going to improve if you just look at more samples or just coffee other things from the internet. You, it has to come from your own because that's not something that you can bring with you during the test. Okay, so I guess that's for us today. And thanks a lot for your pearl wisdom. Now it's time to study IELTS.